Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of the Sheffield United career mode here on FIFA 23. Make sure you drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel and you won't miss any more of this save. In episode 1 yesterday, we were able to get our first points and our first win in the Premier League. And our first draw and defeat as well, so we're well-rounded as a club so far. But if we can do that moving forward for the rest of the season, then we should be good to stay up, right? Four points from the first three games is pretty, pretty decent. If we average that throughout the whole season, then surely we'll finish outside the bottom three and hopefully towards the upper mid-table. But it can all change, of course, and... In FIFA, it usually does. Forgive any uh, headset stuff. My Astros died yesterday. So I'm currently plugged in on a very short cable to another pair of uh, wireless headphones that I use for my phone whilst I wait for another set of Astros to arrive today. So if I seem a little bit over here at times, it's because the cable's not very long and I can't actually stretch that far. So uh, do forgive. It'll only be for today. The, uh, the new headset will arrive in three to six hours as I'm recording this. So uh, one thing we do need to adjust is rather typically, as I started the save recording the day before you saw episode one, I recorded the episode. And then two hours later, Sheffield United announced that Undii had officially now left the club to go to Marseille. So <laughs> that's just my timing, isn't it? So we will sell Undii at the first available opportunity and uh, I'll list him on the transfer list right now but he'll have six months to actually give his all for the club. Unless you'd rather I didn't use him, as in real life, he won't play any Premier League games for Sheffield United. So perhaps for today, I won't include him. We'll play Jebison, who made a good impression in the first episode yesterday in a cup game. And then if you guys would like me to use NDI for the rest of this first half of the season, I will. If you'd rather I don't use him because that's a more realistic thing to do, then I won't. You decide. It's just as much your save as it is my save. Right, we'll throw Jebo up top and we'll start today with games in the Premier League. We have Newcastle, West Ham, we'll simulate Chelsea and then we'll play Aston Villa as the third and final game of the day, of course, unfortunately, going out to Lake Norian in the Cup yesterday in the Carabao Cup, but we played a rotated, young, rather average side and, uh, and got undone. So let's try and not come undone against Newcastle United next, shall we? Newcastle United then bringing with them Nick Pope in goal. Kieran Trippier is suspended, so Emil Kraft starts up top. New signing Sandro Tonali in the midfield with Alexander Isak up top and new signing Harvey Barnes on the left-hand side for them. Only one point so far this season for Newcastle, so certainly they could do with improving. We need to ensure that we score at home to maintain the goal-scoring streak at Bramall Lane for the manager objective, but hopefully we'll be able to do that. Recording this before you've seen episode t uh, one, so haven't yet had the feedback on which camera angle you'd like me to use, whether you want me to go back to the telebroadcast or whether you oh, keep that in, or whether you're happy with uh, me using this one to add something new to the save. Also waiting for your feedback on episode one as to where to send my youth scouts, but obviously wanting to record ahead to ensure that you guys get daily videos now that we're back recording once more. So take that feedback on board and it'll be action for episode three. Bogle into Sander Berger with a great first start. Sander Berger! Good save by Nick Pope. You get to see more of the ground from this angle as well, don't you, in that camera angle. Oli Norwood will deliver the corner, and it's not bad. Oli McBurney's up. Sven Botman wins the header, and Harvey Barnes will clear. Norwood won the header, but aimed it, unfortunately, straight at Joel Linton. Harvey Barnes trying his best. I don't know whether Jaden Bogle knew much about that, but it... has fallen back for us. It just kind of hit him in the face. Can he win this header? He has done well. Oli McBurney... Has Jebo making runs. Now Jebison missed a chance in a similar situation against Leighton Orient yesterday. And Pope's made a good save here. Botman puts his head where he could have been, may well even have been, caught by the foot of the fellow striker. But unfortunately, no goal. Big save by Nick Pope there. And it's a second one-on-one -on -one effort in a good situation that Jebison's missed. Alexander Isak doesn't miss them though on his left foot Newcastle take a 1-0 lead here that's how you do it Daniel 
But McBurney might not need his pace sometimes because there's, oh, room to play passes and play the ball to feet. And Nick Pope comes and smothers at the feet of John Flick. So very nearly an equalising goal. McBurney played back in again. And now Sander Berger's in behind. A lovely turn of pace. And Sander Berger again draws the save out of Nick Pope, who for a second time denies the Norwegian the opening goal. Sheffield United goal of the game. Fleck. Max Lowe's got pace. And he's got a pass to go with it. And Jebo's in a good position. Nolly McBurney's made a good run. And McBurney's in here. Just needs to get it under control. Nolly McBurney blocked by Fabian Scher, who's come across brilliantly to stop us from finding the equaliser. Egan. Barnes again. Egan in the way for a second time. And Captain Fantastic does the job. New captain, of course, with the release of Billy Sharp. Hopefully he can prove to be worth the step up and the extra responsibility we need to score and we might do here McBurney is in behind Ollie McBurney we have scored the streak continues at home not necessarily the best thing to celebrate quite as wildly in front of the away fans but we'll take the goal Ollie McBurney on the score sheet again for Sheffield United and we're level in the Premier League I'll tell you what if we can find a good pass here not only could we equalise for Ollie McBurney we could take the lead for Ollie McBurney Oh, and have we ever? Ollie McBurney smashes it. A brace for him. Two for Sheffield United. And maybe just three points at the end of the day as well. What a turnaround. Newcastle with only one point in their opening three games. Which is poor for them. And now it might be just one point from the opening four. What a finish, Ollie. We'll have a look at a replay of that. Thank you very much. On his right foot from an angle. But great power on it. And that's what's beaten the keeper. Smash. And Koulibaly is onside just, I think, there. George Balder, he is indeed. We'll play it on the floor, looking for Alex Myers. He's going to have his work cut out now with extra responsibility. I mean, if that's not a pass back, I don't know what else is. He's just walked over to his keeper, who's then picked it up. Alex Myers is going to have extra work to do now that uh, NDI is... Oh, is he going to have extra work to do? Because he might not be fit for it. Well, we're losing NDI because he's been sold. And we might lose Alex Myers because he's injured. And we might lose our lead. And we have what a terrible turn of events here at Bramall Lane. Alexander Isak giving it the big un in front of the home fans after Ollie McBurney gave it the big un in front of the away fans earlier on. And it's 2-2 here. Slimani fouled. And Myers now off the pitch. We need to be wary. We don't lose this. We scored two in quick succession. We can't allow them to do the same. Ball duck around the corner to Koulibaly who's away here. And if we can set Jebo away, Jefferson's in behind. Your match winner for Sheffield United, Daniel Jebinson. The extra pace and physicality enough to see us win the league. Win the game. We'll say win the league there. See us win the league. They had wild seeds when they equalised. Ours are wilder. Well in, Jebo. Lovely finish. We will win this one. Harvey Barnes. We might not have won it right at the death. He's sacked. Wild over the bar. He's missed the target. We won't miss out on any points today. 1-0 down. 2-1 up. Pegs back to 2-2. Late on, but still win out on the day. You love to see it. An injury that we're waiting to see. Just quite how frustratingly long that might be. You always worry. You always worry about whether it's going to be a seven-monther. And it's going to be a seven-monther. Alex Myers, our future star who had potential to be special, might not anymore. By the time he gets back from his injury, he might not be potential to be special anymore. We pray that it is still the case that he has that highest potential to be special marker, but... Oh, Rianne Brewster is going to be dragged into the fray now. Well, that's not great for Alex Myers, certainly. But the three points on the board are great for us. We're actually in sixth after four games. Who'd have thunk it? West Ham away next. Oh, I hate... I wonder how the bubbles will look with the new camera, actually. It might not be quite so offensive on your eyes, but I bet it still is. West Ham's starting lineup: Alphonse Ariola in goal. To be fair, this will look very familiar because I don't think West Ham have made any signings so far in the current transfer window. Sotic and Paqueta in the midfield. Of course, no Declan Rice now. Uh, Pablo Fornals, Jarrod Bowen and Mikel Antonio up top. And uh, well, it's a very familiar looking West Ham side minus Declan Rice, basically. 
Daniel Jebison leads the line again with Ollie McBurney. No changes from us from the previous match day because why would I change anything after that result? And hopefully we can do it again. And actually, from this camera angle, no bubbles. Oh, thank the Lord. Maybe we found a way around them. I hate the bubbles so much. Challenge from Jared Bowen. Although the referee seems to not like it, but he's not going not gonna to discipline him at all. Oh, it's a lovely ball. Antonio is in behind and he's onside here. Not got much in the way of support, though. Oh, I've definitely fouled Paqueta. I'll take the corner, not the free kick. I just, oh, I don't know as it's worth a booking. I just tried to stretch to block the shot I thought was coming. Pablo Fornells will be the man to take the corner for West Ham. That early yellow card might actually cause us some problems a little bit later on in the game, so we may need to make a substitution for Oli Nord. A little bit later on. Uh, the clearance didn't go away at all, and now Mikel Antonio pounces on the header. Well, we went 1-0 down against Newcastle, and uh, we were still able to get the win. But I think that's a bit harsh there. I've aimed to... I've tried to clear that header away. I don't know whether he's mistimed it, but he's just headed it backwards rather than away. And then Mikel Antonio's got the run on the defender. Look, he's, the defender's goal side, and then weirdly just almost teleports back three feet and Antonio gets in front of him that's a very FIFA goal isn't it Paqueta into Mikel Antonio over the top Bowen's in behind gets it under control well but there's a lot well I was going to say there's a lot of defenders around him he shouldn't be able to get the shot off he got the shot off Fodderingham had to make the save they got some quality on the bench if they need it West Ham to try and extend the lead or get it back again should we somehow find an equaliser but we are not even close to finding an equaliser in this game so far. They've had nearly 10 efforts now. We've had, I think, one so far. So that kind of gives you an overarching view of just how bad we've been today. Bowen, Paqueta, Antonio. Oh, Wes, what a save. I don't know if he knew much about it. Just put himself in a position and stayed tall and able to get a block on it. It's kept us in it, and Koulibaly's trying his hardest to ensure that not only are we in it, but we get some points from it too. And then he's given the ball away, and Angelo Ogbonna, of all people, is breaking into the box here for West Ham United. Well in, Wesley. Koulibaly caught on it again. Ben Rama looking to get away now. Around the corner to... Antonio... Twice, Koulibaly's been caught in possession in the middle of the park since coming onto the pitch. First time round, we got away with it. Second time round, we don't. Mikel Antonio punishes us for the mistake. And we will be losing our second game of the season. And Koulibaly trying to make up for it. But honestly, pal, I don't know whether you can. If we get one, it will almost make it even more frustrating. I'd rather lose by two goals to nil, which it looks like we will do with 30 seconds to go. West Ham are going to get the victory here. They, ooh, but by how much? Ollie McBurney out of his feet. Ollie McBurney mm, by two goals to nil. Four wins for West Ham this season now. Unless they had drawn three and won two prior to this match day, actually. They might have been unbeaten. They're on nine points. I just presumed they'd won three and lost two, but they may well be unbeaten, West Ham. They're on 12 points now, that's for sure. We're still stuck on our seven, but seven is still pretty decent. It's the same as Manchester City and Arsenal, so we'll absolutely take it. And actually, West Ham lead the table, lead the league at the top on goal difference. So they're having a fantastic season so far. We've got Chelsea next. That one will be simulated as, again, to reiterate, for the first season at this level, when a side comes up from the league below, we simulate the games against the big six. So Chelsea are one of the big six. Albeit, you wouldn't have known that from last season. Here we go. At home against Chelsea. So, to keep the streak alive, we will need a goal today, please, lads, if you don't mind. I mean, from us, Chelsea, if that's okay. Christopher and Kunku starting up top for them. Mudrick, Sterling and Mod uh, Madueke as the three behind him. Then Enzo Fernandez and Conor Gallagher in the midfield each side. Oh, it's... um. All Chelsea so far, as you can see. This is the first time we've actually made it out of our own bloody half. But actually, it's not bad. Ooh, not bad for a out of our half. A chance apiece. Go on. Jebison's in the box. 
Oh, he took, took too long. Took too long, and now they've got all of the defenders back. Still, someone shoot! Corner. Norwood to take. McBurney underneath it, maybe. Shot from range, perhaps. Shoot! Why does no one want to shoot? Shoot! Shoot! Oh, yes! We did it! Daniel Jefferson scores! We lead against Chelsea by a goal to nil. Someone finally pulled the trigger. And what do you know? Keeper saves it, falls to a fellow teammate, and that way we do get the goal. The home scoring streak continues, but the lead doesn't last for long. 1-1. One, one. Two minutes added on at the end of the game. And Kunku from range saved and cleared. And a point against the Chelsea. That will very much do for us. Thrilled with that. What a start to the season it's genuinely been for us. Yes, we might have lost against West Ham. Yes, we might have lost against Manchester United. But to have eight points from six games and two wins, draws and defeat. We joked at the beginning of the episode that if we just went win, draw, defeat from every set of three games we'd be fine well so far we are actually doing that how is the next set of three games then going to be set up we're slap bam mid table at the minute and it's aston villa away next aston villa's lineup then emiliano martinez in goal as you would expect pal torres new signing at center back for them uh, bibakar kamara alongside uh, yuri tiedemann's new signing in midfield just because of the way that it's like center mid and right mid and left wing etc it looks a bit weird in the lineup there but it is as you would expect uh, Leon Bailey up top alongside Ollie Watkins. So some new signings in there for Villa. They're having an indifferent start to the season. Considering the strength of their certainly starting 11, you'd expect them to be slightly better placed than 12th. Especially considering we're 10th in these early stages of the Premier League season. But there's plenty of time for them to pick up speed. Oh, Leon Bailey's got to do better than that. Unai Emery would be furious that he's missed the target there at the very least. That should be 1-0 Aston Villa inside four minutes here at Villa Park. Oh, could be in trouble there. Was that Moussa Diaby? It was. That was a disgusting challenge. There have been a couple of uh, strong challenges in the opening few moments here. One from me and now one from them as well. But it is all Aston Villa in these opening stages. Yui Tilons has got a long shot in him, as we well know. And he might utilise it here. Ollie Watkins. Bailey! He's missed the target again! And DRB will get a yellow card for that challenge, as he rightly should. Ollie Watkins through the gap. MB Buendia back to Luca Digne. Digne down the line brilliantly. MB Buendia in behind here. In a good position for Aston Villa. And Ollie Watkins. And it's Kamara. Yuri Tielemans, good block by Egan, and away by Norwood. It's just all Aston Villa. I can't get out of our own half, let alone have the chance of maybe doing something myself. And that's going to bobble free for West Fodderingham, thankfully. We need to take a breath, and we need to reset, because this is not going well for us so far. Norwood out to Bogle. Berger is there. And McBurney looking for Daniel Jebison. First time, Daniel! Oh. From a 66-rated striker, I'll allow it. They've had some better chances and missed by bigger margins. So I'll let Daniel off there. But that is a good chance for our first one of the game. Maybe taking it first time wasn't the right option to take. Oh, they've given that straight to Mr. McBurney. Oh, Oli McBurney got five-star skills. Has Oli McBurney got five-star skills? Are you sure? Ollie McBurney's got five stars. Is that from our training him? Surely Ollie McBurney doesn't have five star skills in real life. I don't. I don't. I'm pretty sure Ollie McBurney doesn't have five star skills. I really wasn't expecting that then. I know he's got good dribbling here. Sander Berger trying to use some pace to get away. McBurney around the corner. Back into him. Ollie McBurney. Jebison is there again. And it still falls free. And he's going to make sure this time. We lead by a goal to nil at Villa Park. It's been all Aston Villa. But finally, we've started to break free. Not only have we broken free, we take the bloody lead. DRB. Taking his sweet damn time. Matty Cash to Ollie Watkins. And Buendia, it's... Still Aston Villa doing the majority of the attacking. And now, we've not done the majority of the scoring. We're level. 
We've had some good goals scored against us so far this season. Ryan Christie for Bournemouth springs to mind. This is not quite as good as that, but it's certainly up there. Filler a level. Max low into Fleck. Oh, Diaby's in trouble. He's already on a yellow and now he's going to get himself sent off. Moussa Diaby, new signing for Aston Villa. A red card for him. He was late with the first challenge earlier. He was late with his challenge there as well. And Unai Emery is furious with him. They've done really well to get themselves back level. And they might have just thrown that all away now. Oh, go on. John Fleck at pace? Question mark. Not really pace. Molly McBurney, though. Oh, what a challenge by Pau Torres. That's the sort of interception that they paid however many tens of millions of pounds for Pau Torres for. That was potentially game-saving for Aston Villa there, because surely Ollie McBurney was going to turn that home. We would have expected better a Luca Dinier there. And now Sander Berg has got them on the counter-attack again, and Ollie McBurney is the man in the middle who's going to need some support, which is arriving, but it's Kamara that gets the foot in this time. Aston Villa doing well with interceptions. Rephrase. Everybody for Aston Villa other than Moussa Diaby has done well with interceptions so far in this game. Fodderingham has to react late, but still keeps it in play. And it'll be 1-1 as we approach half-time. They've dropped Leon Bailey to the right side now. So they're, they're basically playing 4-2-2-1 rather than 4-2-2-2. So they have adjusted for the red card, Aston Villa. Make them slightly less effective going forward. But let's be honest, with the pace they've got up top and the quality they've got in those positions as well, they're still going to be just as dangerous. It's not a red card that significantly weakens Aston Villa defensively or really offensively. It just gives us a little bit of an advantage of having the extra man. But that extra man might well still come in handy. Moussa Diaby wasn't going to be defending any corners aerially anyway. So that's not going to have had any effect on the outcome here. I mean, Martinez had a big impact on the outcome there though, didn't he? And he's, I thought he was going to come for that. Ahmed Hosic! And Hill's up again. We lead at Villa Park. We have taken advantage of having a man extra. And he's... Oh, God. Nearly, I'm not used to having a plugged-in plugged in headset. Oh, He's twice the size of Moussa Diaby. Diaby could have been stood on Diaby's shoulders and still not reached as high as Ahmed Hosic did for that header. Brilliant leap. Excellent power. What a jump. What a jump. We lead. We've got them on the counter. Jebison to low. It's... Slightly under-hit pass, but it still could open up for us. Fleck will look for McBurney. Oli! Oh, I tried the little dink over the keeper as he came rushing out, and it didn't quite work. We've won it back with Oli Norwood. Oli to Sander. Sander to Fleck. Fleck from distance into the stand. Not quite good enough. Do I? No, I'll go Jebo. Go on. Go on, Jebo. Oh, good block by Diego Carlos. Looking to try and kill it. Jaden Bogle going off for George Baldock now. Bogle struggling for stamina, but to be fair, he does so much forward running, it's not a surprise, really. He's constantly up and down that right-hand side. It's a wonder that Max Lowe isn't also as tired the majority of the time as well. That's a very important interception by Ahmed Hosic. And McBurney needs to hold this up. He tried his best, but he just couldn't quite do it. Couldn't quite get there ahead of Ollie Watkins with the attempted interception. And now here come Aston Villa looking for that equaliser once more. What a ball! Emi Buendia's touch, though, lets him down. We saw a very similar goal scored against us in the first episode yesterday by Leighton Orient. And Aston Villa couldn't replicate the spectacular finish from Orient yesterday. Let's see what we can do in these final few stages. Can we replicate? Uh, no. Leighton Orient. Who knew that Leighton Orient were going to be setting the standard for this save? Not me, that's for sure. Sander Berg, he's got some space, but the shot's pretty rubbish. But we've wasted... Quite a bit of time here, and with only two minutes to go now, surely we get the win. Gimme. Oh, Sander Berger is a machine in the middle. Just bullying opposition players out of the way. George Baldock getting forward here. Jebo's forward with me, but I'm just going to run to the corner to waste enough time to see us get the win. Now we can try and get it into the middle, perhaps, for something else, but it's not necessary because the referee will blow his whistle and... Whether it's thanks to the red card or not, we still win away from home at Villa Park. This Sheffield United side are very, very impressive at the minute. Thoroughly enjoying this five-back formation, which is absolutely not something I usually say. And at the moment, 
we've got not many concerns about relegation. We certainly had more of a difficult time of things with Southampton in the save on the second channel when we were trying to survive there. But here, everything's going according to plan so far. Better than the plan, if we're completely honest. Much better than the plan. Eighth in league after seven games is dreamland stuff for Sheffield United at this moment in time. Fulham, bottom of the table with just one point and no wins so far this year. Forest with four points and no wins. Luton have gotten a victory, but still in the relegation zone. And the other promoted side, Burnley, actually having... A very similar sort of season to us. It's just that they've lost one more than we've drawn. So Burnley adjusting well to the Premier League. We've scored nine. We've conceded nine. So we're not setting the world alight. But so far, the Premier League torch is being shone very well by Sheffield United. And hopefully that will continue to be the case. Do please drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more. Drop your comments in the uh, section down below with your feedback. Again, about... Uh, where players need to go with regards uh, well where, rephrase where scouts need to go with regards to the youth players and their nationalities and of course uh, what do I do with Ndi? do I utilise him especially with the injury to Alex Myers or because he's gone in real life do we now just cut ties with him he's agreed to move to Hoffenheim so he is going to leave do we just leave that at that and say see you early man Thanks for your service, but thanks for the money as well. I'll let you guys decide. That's all from me for now, though. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another one.